This week on Jambar TV, we'll talk about a piano professor's prestigious award. Then, we'll explore the Antigone play being performed at YSU. We'll also get into the lacrosse team and Natalie Calandra Ryan's 100th career goal. Hello and welcome into Jambar TV. I'm Molly Burke. And I'm Guy Tepsik. The Butler Institute of American Art will be presenting 14th May, 1968, by French artist Pierre Soulages, April 15th, in a private opening. The mural was originally commissioned for display in a Pittsburgh office building. Once the building decided to release the mural, the butler was the first to receive it. Louis Zona, executive director and chief curator of the butler, explained what the process was like. We had to get it off the wall in two weeks because it was an active lobby and they didn't want it looking like a construction site and they didn't want any work done during the daylight hours so we could only work at night to remove it. Removing the mural from that wall in downtown Pittsburgh was a miracle. The mural was then placed in a separate branch of the butler. In 2019 the branch cut ties with the butler but kept the mural. In December of 2022 the butler won the lawsuit and brought the mural back to the butler. Zona said the mural was always the butler's. The, the piece of belonged to us clearly and nobody else had a, a right to it. It's such a beautiful piece. I guess uh, you could see why there would be an interest in having the piece. But the artist and the people that own the building gave it to us. In fact, we have all the paperwork. For more information about the butler, visit its website. YSU's Board of Trustees approved a new policy regarding religion. The policy lets students miss class three times a semester for religious holidays. The policy was written in response to Ohio House Bill Number 353, the Testing Your Faith Act. The bill requires all state universities and colleges to accommodate absences for religious ceremonies. However, this won't heavily affect YSU students. Mark Vopat, professor of philosophy and president of YSU's Ohio Educational Association, said instructors already had to excuse absences for faith-based events. We've already, we've already had the means to give religious accommodation for pretty much everything. Instructors are required to provide a summary of the policy on their syllabi. Students must list any dates they'll miss within 14 days of a course's start. More information on the policy will be provided on YSU's website. A YSU music professor won a prestigious national award. Carolina Oltmans, who heads piano studies, received a top teacher award from Steinway Piano Company. Oh. The teacher award came out of nowhere. I had, I, as a matter of fact, I practically overlooked it in my inbox because I get a lot of email from Steinway as a Steinway artist. So I'm like looking, opening, and ooh, <laughs> okay, you know. Oltmans has played piano since she was three years old. She's taught at YSU for nearly three decades. Besides sharing her talent with YSU students, she's performed around the world. Read this week's Jambar for more on this talented teacher. At the end of Women's History Month, the YSU Women's Retirees announced the recipients for the 2023-2024 academic year. The first recipient is Abigail Knight of Austintown. Knight is majoring in forensic science and is a member of the YSU soccer team. The second recipient is Janelle Pizzuti of Clarion, Pennsylvania. Pizzuti is majoring in chemical engineering with a special interest in energy and environmental conservation. Lastly, Daria Williams of Youngstown. Williams is majoring in social work with the goal of helping families and children. The American Sign Language Club and student nonprofit leadership organization teamed up for a book drive that benefited the Public Library of Youngstown in Mahoning County. 242 children's books were collected and given to a used bookstore in the Poland Library branch. The profits from the store will be given back to the Public Library for children's programs. Deborah Liptak, Development Director for the Public Library, said the drive had a big impact by the students collecting children's books and fiction books and history books, for example, which are some of our best sellers, that just helps to keep the store going and for us to have good inventory and, and keep it fresh and, and get some new stuff. 
The ASL club focused on gathering children's books specifically about American Sign Language and Deaf culture. The club members said they hope the books spread awareness about ASL and help young people learn more about deaf people. For more information on the ASL club, head to its Instagram. The Trestle Institute for Leadership and Teamwork educates students on the soft skills needed for career success. The Institute's first initiative is the online-based Personal Leadership Badge Program. Jenna Binsley, Program Manager, says there's much to achieve. So there's five different badges you can work on um, that really focus on how can we help our students from different backgrounds, different levels, kind of raise them up to the same level um, and kind of provide them that platform to then go on and you know, pursue leadership in their own work. The Personal Leadership Badge Program falls under the Personal Leadership Track, which is one of the four tracks the Institute hopes to offer moving forward. This program is currently available for the Institute's partners, the Honors College, and Athletics, but they are working towards making it available to all students. Around 20% of college students suffer from mental health issues such as anxiety and depression, but many don't know that nutrition and diet can affect how they feel. Chemicals like serotonin, melatonin, and dopamine are linked to our diet. They regulate stress, relaxation, sleep, blood pressure, and coordination. Some of the most common ingredients that can negatively impact mental health are salt, refined sugars, and carbs. Dietetics professor Zara Rowlands explains. There are certain foods that promote better brain function, and there are some that really promote a lot more anxiety and depression and stress. Students can improve their diet by eating more fruits and vegetables and following the MIND diet. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, help is available at YSU Student Counseling Services. YSU hosted a History Day event April 1st for students in primary school. Samantha Smith has more on the story. Every year, YSU holds History Day on campus for students in middle and high school. David Simonelli, a history professor, described what students do for History Day. It is, you know, usually easiest described as sort of science fair for history kids. It's a similar sort of competition where students uh, do projects uh, of, you know, five different uh, types of projects. They can do uh, documentaries, uh, online exhibits, um, papers, uh, performances, uh, or websites on uh, historical subjects related to that year's theme. The theme for this year's History Day was Frontiers and Kids, you know, will do um, something like um, uh, Marie Curie um, uh, as a pioneer in, um, uh, as a woman scientist, um, Jackie Robinson as like the first uh, uh, modern black baseball player, um, the Pony Express, um, uh, traveling back and forth across the American frontier in uh, the 1860s, uh, those sorts of things. For more information about History Day, visit the National History Day Organization's website. For Jambar TV, I'm Samantha Smith. AG Beauty Salon and Spa is celebrating its one year anniversary on April 25th. The salon is located on Lincoln Avenue by University Nutrition. YSU alumna and owner Alexandra Galantis opened the salon after noticing a lack of those services near YSU. And there's just not really anything in the vicinity. There's no salons, barbershops, anything like that. So I knew that I wanted to open up something that people could come to um, and just come and get services done. AG Beauty partners with YSU clubs and organizations. The salon is open to sponsoring events as well. For more information on the salon, visit their Instagram page or call AG Beauty Salon and Spa. We've been having a pretty rainy week. Zonday, how's the weather going to be this weekend? Some sunny weather this weekend with little to no chance of rain. I have a more detailed weather report after the break. The communication department is much more than media or delivering a speech. 
The YSU Communication Department offers programs in telecommunication, journalism, and communication studies. We inspire creativity. We encourage each student's passion. We explore new and advanced technologies that connect the human race. The communication programs at YSU ensure that every student is prepared and experienced for the outside workforce for life after YSU. Join the Jam Bar and find your voice when you tell the next big story. Become a host of Rookery Radio and gain hands-on experience. Or get involved with TV productions like Light the Wick, Penguin Rundown, and Jam Bar TV. YSU's communication department is much more than a department, an education, or a degree. It's a home for passionate individuals, for students to find and pursue what they love. Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah, man. Exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should even be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together, I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. Hello and welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm Zonde Smith and let's get into your weekly weather forecast. Here is this weekend's weather. Today is looking sunny with a very small chance for showers. We'll see some cloud coverage throughout the day with low wind speeds. Tonight we'll see some more cloud coverage with a 12% chance for rain and wind speeds will stay mild, keeping around 10 miles per hour. Saturday those temperatures will rise even more. We'll see a low chance for rain in the morning with some higher humidity. In the afternoon the temps will rise into the 60s with little cloud coverage throughout the day and low wind speeds. Saturday night, it will be pretty chilly even with the cold temperatures. The crescent moon will be nearly fully visible with little cloud coverage. Sunday will be our clearest day of the weekend and one of our warmest. In the morning, we'll see some clouds and some humidity. Another day with a very low chance for rain and barely any clouds in the sky. Temps will drop into Sunday night and we'll see some more clouds move into the valley, but that chance for rain stays under 10%. Now, let's take a look at my four day forecast. Friday, the high will hit 53 degrees and the temps will drop to below freezing by night with a low of 30. Saturday, the temps will rise as during the day we'll see a high of 60 and with the small chance of rain, we'll certainly get outdoors. The temperatures drop to a chill 34 at night. Sunday will be the one of our warmest days of the weekend with a high of 68, which drops to a low 40. Monday will be another warm day with the high hitting 68 degrees, though with the high chance for rain, we'll likely be stuck inside. The low will drop to 46 degrees by night. That's it for this weekend's weather forecast, but you'll want to stick around because Austin Caroline will be in the studio with the latest in student life. We're not waiting to see what the world has us. It's more about what you have in store for the world. All you need is the opportunity. All you need are the resources of a large university and the advantages of a personalized academic setting where you can experience new worlds in the arts and sciences, business and education and make them your own. We are where you shape your future. We are Youngstown State University and proud. You're looking to your future preparing for your goals, and they're closer than you think. Because here, success is part of the plan. It's a place where academic and social opportunities are meant to prepare you for life, not just the next four years. You'll be equipped to face new challenges and turn hard work into a career. You're ready for your success to take root, and here's where it starts. We are Youngstown State University, and proud. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. 
I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. Hello and welcome back into Jambar TV. I'm Austin Caroline and let's get into this week's student life. YSU has received additional don donations towards the new Zolden Student Center. Paul McFadden, YSU Foundation President, said YSU is closer to their $20 million goal that will allow them to start renovations. We started slow in the fall. We were trying to look for a lead gift and thank you to the Zolden family for making a $5 million lead gift. Since that point, we've also acquired another $2 million and I attribute that to the momentum that the Zolden family gave us because success bodes more success. The new center will be updated for students to enjoy in the future. The timeline is still being worked on. Greek tragedies and themes of war and justice will be taking center stage in Bliss Hall this weekend. Editor-in-Chief Elizabeth Koss explores the anguish in Antigone. Based on John Anahee's translation of Antigone, student performers here at Youngstown State University will be exploring the idea and theme of whether or not history repeats itself. The 1940s version of the play is set in France during the Nazi German occupation of the country. Megan Evans, who plays the titular role of Antigone, said that the play explores competing values in intimate ways. It's actually very personal, I think, um, and there's two sides that both believe so strongly in their ideologies. So it's really an exploration of two people with such strong ideas and how big major political world events can influence our own interpersonal relationships. The play, directed and selected by Todd Dickin, should surprise the audience and encourage conversations about today's current political climate. And the messages that are inherent in these conversations, I think, are still things that we're talking about today, whether it's on a global side uh, perspective, whether it's uh, on a, a regional perspective, or even within our own families. I personally, I'm super jazzed about this uh, to watch what these actors are going to do because I think uh, they're going to impress, uh, surprise, uh, and even shock some of, some of their, their family, their friends. The play will only be offered a few more times for viewing in Ford Theater tonight at 7.30 p.m. and tomorrow at 2. For tickets, you can visit YSU's section of ticks.com. Reporting for the Jam Bar, I'm Elizabeth Koss. The Butler Institute of American Art will have a grand opening of its new edition April 15th. It will feature a 14 by 15 foot ceramic mural by Pierre Soulage named 14th May 1968. Louis Zona, director at the Butler Institute of American Art, explains why the new edition is needed for larger art pieces. We need to store away major works of art until they become of interest to us uh, for a special exhibition. That's the key reason. But also we have oversized works of art, some very large works of art with uh, ceilings uh, too low to accommodate these works in, on display. The opening will also feature several paintings from Paul Jenkins. The International Student Organization held its first international festival on March 31st. Jambar reporter Molly Burke has more on the event. Students and staff gathered in the Chestnut Room of Kilcali to dance, watch cultural performances, and eat foods that come from a variety of countries represented by YSU international students. Batul Alkarin, sophomore international business major, is the vice president of the ISO. She said the festival was created to bring international and domestic students together. We put the international festival because we really want to showcase our like um, traditional outfits, our traditional culture and beliefs. So we want to share with people and also want to international students and domestic students to get along together and combine. Among the dishes at the festival was Turkish delight, vegetarian curry, egg rolls and more. The ISO advisor, Nicholas Dubas, said the ISO worked with Chartwell's Dining Service to create the evening's food. We've gotten recipes that we've worked really close with Chartwell's and um, they're going to go out and buy the spices um, and you know we've been working with them to pick certain types of food within our budget. 
Many students showcased their culture or religion through performances such as dancing, singing, music, and more. More than 10 organizations and clubs set up tables around the Chestnut Room. Freshman biology pre-med major Manav Desai both performed a dance and hosted a table for the Pakistani Indian Student Organization. He demonstrated some of the photos on his table. This is Kantara. This is from Tulunadu, eastern coast of India. In Kantara, it's a deity for a tribal village who protects and guards their village. This is processions for Ganesh Chaturthi, like they bring the Holy Lord Ganesha into their home. And this is the Golden Temple. For more information on the International Student Organization, head to its Facebook page. Reporting for the Jam Bar, I'm Molly Burke. Hack YSU is a beginner-friendly hackathon for students of all experience levels. This year's Hack YSU will be April 14th to the 16th. Students group up into teams and have 36 hours to create a piece of hardware or software with mentors there to help. Last year, second year computer science major Nathan Gallagher said he worked on a zombie typing game with his team, which won first place. It was a typing game that had about four different levels of increasing difficulty. Um, basically, you were playing as the main character and the zombies were coming at you and you had to type the word above their head to eliminate the zombie and move on to the next level. We were not expecting to win first prize at all, um, but I guess the judges liked it and we, yeah, we ended up winning the first prize, which was cool. Guest speakers will be featured at the event, food and drinks are provided, and prizes are given out at the end of the event. Hack YSU will be held in the DeBartlow Stadium Club. Registration is open on the Hack YSU website. Now you'll want to stick around as John Ostapowitz will be in the studio with all the latest in YSU sports. You're here to be part of something bigger, to make things happen. For you, college is about knowledge being shared, learning experiences that aren't limited to the classroom. On campus, you want to matter. It's about engaging every day, building relationships with students, with mentors, with the community, in the heart of a reinvented city. We are that something bigger. We are Youngstown State University and proud. The feeling when my hands are on the piano, it's become comforting. It's somewhere that I can express myself. I go to Youngstown State University and my passion is playing music. YSU is allowing me to take what I love and turn it into a career and do it every single day of my life. I'm Alyssa and I'm Y and Proud. Growing up, I love figuring out how things work, putting things together. I love being able to come up with an idea, design it, just the whole process of creating things. I go to school here at Youngstown State and my passion is 3D design. I chose YSU because all the equipment, the research being done here, it's like a playground for me. I'm Alex and I'm Y and Proud. Wait, what? What's going on right now? Yeah, man. Exercise. I don't know. I don't know if I should be talking to you right now. It's got lots of benefits. Mm. Okay. The benefits of exercise include increased levels of energy, higher quality of sleep, better muscle and bone strength, improved memory, and clearer skin. Welcome back to Jambar TV. I'm John Ostapowitz, and this is your weekly sports update. The Youngstown State softball team had a busy week playing four games over a four-day span. I went inside the Gavelli Sports Complex to take a deeper look at the team season. The YSU softball team split conference play at the softball complex against Oakland April 2nd. The Penguins were supposed to play a three-game series, but it was canceled on April 1st. With an outdoor sport such as softball, cancellations are not uncommon. Head coach Brian Campbell said he adjusts accordingly to make sure it doesn't affect the players. You know, it's one of those things that we deal with weather and you just kind of got to go with the flow. 
The first game of the doubleheader started off with a Youngstown State loss, 1-2. Despite the loss, the team bounced back with a win over the Grizzlies in the nightcap, 6-1. Both Conchetta Rinaldi and Jillian Jackski recorded two RBIs, while Avery Schumacher and Haley Niedekor recorded solo home runs. The Penguins learned from their tough loss, which Rinaldi credits the team's grit and ability to rebound after a tough loss. Um, but the second game, I really think we showed them who we were when we bounced back and uh, got a split with them. Youngstown State traveled to the University of Akron, but the game was canceled after a weather delay in the first inning. The Penguins stayed at home to take on Niagara University in a doubleheader on April 6th. For more information on that game, check out ysusports.com. Youngstown State is back in action against Robert Morris. April 11th and 12th. Last weekend, the YSU women's tennis team played its first Horizon League games of the spring season, claiming a win over the Cleveland State Vikings 5-2. Women's tennis head coach Michael Sopiel said how great it felt to defeat the reigning conference champions. Last year was very tough for us because we lost here against that team, so it was really nice uh, to come back and being able to get the win here. The Penguins returned back to the YSU Indoor Tennis Center earlier today and played against the newest member of the Horizon League, Chicago State University. The men's tennis team won their matches against Chicago State last Sunday, 4-3, as YSU picked up the doubles point and saw singles wins from Laurentu Mondicescu, Javier gonzalez Pla, and Gabrielle Moreno. The Penguins played against Cleveland State yesterday and will have a rematch against Chicago State at the YSU Indoor Tennis Center later today. The lacrosse team opened their conference play this weekend against the Mid-American Conference preseason favorites, Robert Morris, at the Farmers National Bank Field inside the Cavelli Sports Complex. The Lady Gwens lost in a tight 12-10 match falling 2-8 overall as Ali Corinne matched her career high of seven points with five goals and two assists, while sophomore Natalie Calandra Ryan scored her 100th career point, becoming the first Penguin to reach this milestone with just two seasons of play. The Gwens will be back in action against Akron on April 5th. You can go to YSUsports.com for a quick game recap. In other news, the YSU baseball team returned to Eastwood Field for a seven-game homestand. On March 31st, the Mastodons defeated Youngstown State with a final of 21-9. On April 1st, the Gwens defeated Purdue Fort Wayne 15-14 in thrilling fashion, thanks to a walk-off single from Matt Thompson. The Mastodons defeated the Penguins 9-3 on April 2nd. On April 4th, the University of Pittsburgh came to town for one game and defeated the Penguins 13-7. Youngstown State will host three conference games at 5 p.m. on April 6th, at 3 p.m. on April 7th, and at 1 o'clock, rounding it out April on April 8th. To listen to the game, go to YSNlive.com or view live stats on YSUsports.com. Now let's send it over to Exande for your weekly weather recap. With high temps and low chances for rain, this weekend's weather is looking good, but we will see some rain at the start of our week. <laughs> well, that's all we have this week for Jambar TV. Thank you for watching and stay safe, Penguins. in part by the YSU Foundation and the Jane F. Lamb Charitable Foundation. Thank you.